also record in the cloud. Okay, now it's it's done, it's active, and please, Sonata, continue from where you have been uh, uh, last time. Sorry, I skipped slide B. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cannot share the screen now. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I need to take some more pollen. I put you now co host. <laughs> Got, now, now you can. Yes, I forgot to put you as co host to, in order to be able to share screen. Yes. Now you should be able. Yes, very good. It's coming. I told you a little bit about uh, art therapy, what we do in Lithuania. Uh, so um, our art therapy society uh, celebrates 30 years because it was established 1991. And as I told you, uh, we uh, make workshops. We Every year we have uh, conferences in Lithuania. Uh, on, in the society and also we participate in international events. So uh, also the study uh, in apitherapy field uh, was done uh, by uh, our physicians. For example, Professor Jankowski used eye drops containing honey and royal jelly and propolis for patients suffering from eye diseases. Also, uh, as I mentioned to you, um, we are co-founders of the um, International Federation of Atherotherapy and organized the um, FIFA Congress in Kona, Stephen FIFA Congress. So our professor, Jan Rolis, is 95 year old and he wrote a lot of books on propolis and his research is uh, related to propolis and he wrote now a very, very interesting book, The Variable of Life. And so um, we see here a, a founder of um, one company in 1994, which uh, dedicated a which manufactures over 60 different products, uh, uh, preparations uh, from bee products, and has good manufacturing practices. So we, everybody knows that apitherapy helps, but up to now in Lithuania, it was not regulated uh, apitherapy. And we uh, were seeking for 30 years that it will be legalized in this area. And now we are very, very happy because really we started to work very, very uh, hard in 2011. And one chamber, medicine chamber, Lithuanian uh, Health Lifestyle and Nature of Medicine Medicine Chamber was established in 2011. And one of the activities of this group was to Applicate natural medicine for the treatment or prevention of diseases. Later, um, in 2012, the resolution of the famous of Parliament of the Republic of Lithuania on the policy for the protection and promotion of individual and public health was adopted. And in 2014, it was decided to regulate the practice of non-traditional medicine and the Department for Coordination of Non-Traditional Medicine initiatives was established at the Ministry of Health in 2014. And now we are really very happy because uh, 2000, uh, then it was adopted the law on complementary and alternative health care of the Republic of Lithuania. And uh, this law came into effect 
in 2021. So one year ago. Now this law provides preparation of legislation in Lithuania. The tasks are to form a development committee for the assessment of specialist qualifications to approve the list of specific services to be included, to prepare procedures for preparations of these service and protocols to prepare the rules for licensing the activities of uh, complementary and alternative healthcare specialists and to prepare various rules for licensing activities. So we are now in the action to uh, do this. Uh, so you see apitherapy now is legalized under other uh, Field and other uh, such phytotherapy, erudotherapy, and biogenetics, Ayurveda, body remote therapy, and tannin therapy, acupuncture, and other. So these are all um, services will be legalized in Lithuania, and all necessary documents are in that process for pre are prepared now and so in order uh, to obtain a license as a specialist in art therapy uh, some special documents are required first of all uh, this specialist has to have higher education also, the proof of acquired professional qualification in art therapy, it should be this course, uh, when, uh, they have to uh, listen the course in art therapy, 40, 480 hours. So, all those uh, should be uh, in Lithuania or work in Lithuania and also use official Lithuanian language and so on. Uh, so I would like to mention that uh, this uh, apitherapy specialist he have to have a higher must have higher education degree in medicine or rehabilitation or dentistry, or pharmacy, or nutrition, biology, genetics, biology, biochemistry, veterinary studies, and so on. So you see this group is quite big, but additionally, he must have, uh, uh, must have completed apitherapy training. Uh, 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 this course of apitherapy training under the procedure established by the Ministry of Health. And later, he can work as legalized or <laughs> licensed apitherapist. And we will have not only specialists for apitherapy, who has a high education and also some education in apitherapy, but also assistant specialist in art therapy. Assistant specialist in art therapy will help for specialist in art therapy to do all the necessary uh, procedures and to bring these or uh, so on. But the main figure in this is specialist for art therapy. So now, also, uh, there are some requirements for apitherapy institutions. So they must hold valid licenses of a specialist in apitherapy requirements and protocols for the provision of apitherapy services. Also, they must have the end passport and also must hold a civil liability insurance. Here, there are some requirements for assistance to a therapist. 
it is a person who has attended a basic training course in beekeeping and apiotherapy and has a document responsible for it and also must attend 60 hour qualification training in the basic of beekeeping and apiotherapy. But for specialists for apiotherapy, they have uh, to attend 480 hours in therapy and general medicine. So uh, now everything is in preparation, in procedure, and now uh, uh, we prepare some special documents for the legalization of a puncture and high therapy services in Lithuania. And also, we prepare the program uh, for the training in, to conduct postgraduate studies, is planned to conduct postgraduate studies at university in Kaunas with the aim of obtaining the qualification of a therapy specialist. So, I shared with you the news what happened in Lithuania and what we do in our Lithuanian apitherapy society. So I uh, really happy to, uh, to present uh, this news for all of you and we are trying to do the best in order to prepare all necessary documents, programs, and protocols for that. I and I hope for the help for the help of other apitherapists from the whole of world. And we, of course, we will need a specialist in apitherapy to share their knowledge for this postgraduate. Thank you very much, Sonata. Yes, you got the applause from Antonio too. Yes, can you stop the share screen now? Yes. Can you do? Sorry. Yes. Uh, up, up or down? Not let me. Okay. Of course, yes. I, I, okay, very, very good. It's just just one idea is that uh, um, once uh, a government accepts uh, epitherapy as a specialty for the medical doctors, for the health practitioners, then the evolution of epitherapy is much, much faster. And uh, it's, you know, I, I'm a kind of proud uh, person because here in Romania, once AP therapy was legalized, uh, many, many doctors came to get the, the licensing. So as you know, we have over 500 doctors and they are still coming to get this certification in AP therapy. But before, without certification, a very small amount of interest. So congratulations for what you did in, uh, in Lithuania. I believe you worked a lot, Sonata, on this, isn't it? Thank you. We're trying to do, it's not so easy, of course, but now we have to pro prepare this program 480 hours for apitherapy specialists and we do just not in apitherapy but one part it will be for general medicine because you see it's the big field of specialists not only medical doctors who pra practice apitherapy are also biologists or veterinary specialists so uh, the program uh, on the content is general medicine and also therapy and together 480 hours by big <laughs> amount of hours. <laughs> so I hope I will need the help of all of you <laughs> in these courses. <laughs> yes. yes, thank you very much, Sonata. Thank you again. Okay. And uh, uh, we, we, I see that we have also here among us Bridget, but before Bridget from Australia, please, Please resist a bit more, Bridget, because we have Jana, Dr. Jana Ivsakova from Slovakia, and she's now in the emergency room in the hospital. She's working on this hospital, but she wants also to be with us. Jana, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. 
if you can uh, also activate your microphone yes oh yes we can see you and now activate your microphone i believe you can activate it mm -hmm. can yes. you hear me yes yes and yes we can hear you we can see you very very well thank you yana for for sacrificing your time and staying with us yes thank you <laughs> okay okay can, can you share the presentation or uh I will try share this. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening for everyone who is whenever you are at this moment. Uh, my name is Jana Irsakova. I'm a medical doctor, as you heard from Stefan. And this my very respected teacher asked me to tell you something about apitherapy in our country but I will tell you something about two countries. Uh, I'm afraid that it doesn't work. Uh, just scroll away from the... Ah, yes, 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 it works. Yes. So I will tell you something about apitherapy in Slovak Republic and in Czech Republic too, because I'm Slovak in living and working in Czech Republic. I'm beekeeper in both of those countries and I'm practicing epitherapy in those countries. So uh, I can tell you how it is with epitherapy in those two countries. Uh, today is World Epitherapy Day and uh, it's birthday of uh, Dr. Philip Terch and he was born on today's territory of Czech Republic and her mother was Czech. So I will start with Czech Republic. In Czech Republic, we have Czech Apitherapy Society and it was founded in 2015 and um, uh, actual president, uh, at this time president is Mr. Martin Panek. Uh, you are happy in Romania that uh, your epitherapy is certified in our Republic, in Czech Republic, we are in legislative vacuum. Uh, we are based just on enthusiasm and on um, and on our ability uh, and our activities in this uh, in this group. At this time, we have twenty three members, and uh, we don't have and we can't have official. <laughs> Something happened. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, now, Jana, please, uh, I muted all. Somebody yes. entered accidentally, so please continue. Yes, yes. So uh, we can have clinics, we can call it ambulances, we can do, this, do it in some of our places. And this is not good to present ourselves like therapists. We can tell we are consultants. Uh, but we have still, we still have uh, this, um, association or society and, and we want to uh, it, it was uh, found for propagation and organization some study and uh, we have we are trying to have once a year some some uh, big activity for example it doesn't work yes it works what a surprise we had uh, Dr. Stangachu uh, lectures. It was in 2018, two weeks. Uh, we can join him and uh, study with him. Of course, we are, uh, we, we used to have some uh, self-education meetings, or this lady is previous uh, president of Czech Apitherapy Society, and she's preparing a lot of activities to, to talk about epitherapy for public, for non-keepers, not, not people interesting in therapy like, like practitioners. Uh, we used to have some education, big education event once a year at least. And uh, after, after this lecture, 
we are meeting. This is the photo that sent me actual president, Mr. Panek. He's sitting on the top of the table. And I think when uh, Antoni will come to Czech, Czech Republic to have lectures, he will see how hospitable and joyful are those people. And you can have very nice and fun time. Okay, it's about Czech Republic. Let's go to Slovak Republic. In Slovak Republic, we have the same society, but Slovak Apitherapy Society. It was founded in 2015 too. And uh, president is Mrs. Zuzana Juričkova. Uh, what, what about law? Hmm, we are in the same situation. Nothing is legal. So we must, um, we must work how we can work. Uh, I am Chinese medicine therapist too, and I must tell you that with Chinese medicine is the same situation in our countries. So uh, if you want to practice this kind of medicine, even like general practitioner like me, you can be brave and you just try. But uh, there is a lot of people still trying to, to find different kinds of medicine. So I hope our time will come. Uh, what is important, we are still working like everybody, but what is important uh, that we have big support. Uh, in Czech Republic, there is not such a big support of, uh, of other organizations, but we have big support of Slovak Apitherapy, uh, Slovak Beekeepers Association, especially from president of this association because he is a uh, very big fan of apitherapy and practicing apitherapy by himself. And of course, our president, uh, Mrs. Zuzana Juričková, is a member of executive committee of Slovak Beekeepers Association. Association. So we have such a two very important persons uh, in management of this organization. Uh, of course, we are trying to meet once year uh, on some big event. Uh, our big event was the first was in 2009. And again, with Dr. Stangacu, it was in Nitra. And uh, you can see how many people were interested in this course. Uh, from, from last time in uh, uh, years 2019, 2020, 2021, um, it was very difficult to organize some, some uh, in-person meetings because of COVID, everybody knows. But we were happy that we had meeting uh, one lecture with Antonio Cotto. And next one, this is, uh, this is photo of, of Dr. Filipov. It's a doctor from Russia. It was before war and he can come. Uh, in uh, 2020, we began a cycle of apitherapic lectures prepared. Uh, it was, uh, the, the concept was or is uh, one week for one product. For example, this, uh, this first lecture was about, uh, was about Bivenan. Uh, first part is a presentation of, uh, of uh, president of Ap. The beekeepers association and he is talking about how to about theory from beekeeping and how to collect this product and how to prepare it everything and then the second part is about using medical use of uh, of this product so uh, this uh, this is my part what i'm talking about and uh, uh, we are trying to have some practical part uh, if it's possible, but uh, even we have one weekend for for this topic, um, it uh, it's not enough time, you know. Uh, we are happy that uh, we don't have uh, language barriers between Czech and Slovak. We can understand uh, our languages perfectly. So in 2000. Uh, 15 um, memorandum of cooperation was signed and from this time uh, people from Czech Republic can come to Slovakia uh, to see our education our, to meet us 
So uh, this is um, this is a uh, great possibility to, to have uh, double more uh, education. Uh, if um, even if apitherapy is not officially established in our country, uh, we can use a classical medicine doctors. We can use uh, medical honey and especially in treatment of uh, wounds, of non-healing or long healing wounds. And uh, I can uh, I can show you, this is a very young man, Mr. Yurai Manta, Maitan, sorry. And he's from Institute of Molecular Biology uh, of Slovak Academy of Sciences. And he's one of the world's uh, most important capacities in uh, researching uh, of honeybee. So, uh, in the folk medicine, use of um, uh, bee products is very common. Uh, a lot of people is using propolis or exactly propolis tincture, uh, collecting and consuming of uh, bee pollen is uh, very common in royal jelly. And in last uh, few years, a lot of people uh, like to have their own apitherapy houses. I think that you can you can find them in every district. Um, our education is not still uh, official, but we are trying to do best, and we will invite you to see Slovak Republic. And if you will come, you can see this big wooden bee in uh, open air museum. Uh, in small city very close to Bratislava, where we are uh, practicing or giving our lectures. So thank you for your attention and have a nice bird apitherapy day. Thank you very much, Jana, for your wonderful presentation, short, but very, very good. Uh, because you are thank in you. the emergency department, I have a one, one very difficult question. Did you save the life of somebody with bee products? Uh, like a critical situation, somebody very bad. I have saved somebody who has problem with bee products because <laughs> he was <laughs> he has allergy, you know. But okay. uh, no, no, not not in acute state, you know. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's difficult. It's true. Yes, but in the wounds, <laughs> just the wounds you used already. Yes, I. Uh, yes, of course, of course. I'm using, I'm using uh, a lot of bee venom because uh, I like it from Chinese medicine, from acupuncture. So, I when I have problems, I uh, used to apply bee stings directly in my body. <laughs> you know, not only. Bee venom, honey, propolis, of course, but I'm not afraid about using stings. Yes, very, very good. Yes, a good epitherapist must not be afraid about these stings. Thank you very much, Jana. <laughs> Thank and, you very much. Uh, Have a nice evening. Yes, and uh, I see Bridget. Bridget, what time is it now in Australia? Uh, it's just after 4 a.m. <clears throat> oh, yeah, just yeah, after yeah. 4 a.m. <laughs> Okay, you are so, such a strong me. lady. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Very good. So Kelly has told us a few things about Australia, about what you did in the past. And I'm sure you have several projects now to, to, to do in Australia. Can you tell us uh, more about this? So first of all, um, congratulations for organizing uh, your conference on Australian Apitherapy Association last year. So many of us have been there to the conference. When do you plan to organize the next conference, Australian Apitherapy? <clears throat> well, we're organizing the next conference for the, at the same time in November this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, the theme is natural medicine for anti-aging. Um, we are working on a few projects to get ready for that. And um, Thank, thankfully, thanks to everyone in the apitherapy community who supported us for our first Australian conference. Um, we have many people who are um, not just in Australia, other countries joining the Australian Association, which was 
surprising and wonderful. Um, it was fantastic, actually, that when we did when we when we first started, as you know, Stefan, um, apotherapy is not known at all in Australia. So we're starting from a very low base, and it was quite difficult to get the first conference going. But because of all of the support from you and from others internationally, the conference was very successful. And I think it really helped people, science. Yes, the, the connection is a bit slow. Australia is far away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we lost it for a few seconds. What, what did you say last statements, that last sentences? I'm sorry, I'm on a, I'm in the deep in the bush on a satellite dish. So sometimes it has a little rest. Um, I apologize. So um, just because of the conference, um, it actually helped to legitimize apotherapy for some scientists and doctors in Australia. That's helped us enormously. <clears throat> and also <clears throat> it helped to bring out the scientists working, for example, in Western Australia on uh, bee venom, uh, research for breast cancer tumours and scientists in Sydney and Queensland working using manuka honey. Um, they seem to be working directly with hospitals on that now, which is very good. Um, but, but the publicity about the research has actually helped people come out and approach the association seeking, seeking treatment. Uh, and we've had to say, because Australia doesn't recognise apotherapy, we can't do that unless you have a referral from a doctor. And what surprised us most of, most of all is that a, a, a few doctors, very small number, have actually started uh, referring patients to us. So um, they are very enlightened doctors who do that. But I think what's really happening is the patient's uh, are pushing for that. Some patients with Lyme disease, breast cancer, arthritis have learned about apotherapy and which has been sorry, my satellite had a little rest again. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, no problem. Thank you very, very much, Bridget, for everything you do there. Uh, you have all our support, our love, our friendship, and uh, you are a pioneer in Australia, so uh, I'm sure you do wonderful things. And uh, maybe in November we'll come to your place. We'll announce everybody, maybe it will be not any more problems like COVID, no vaccinations. <laughs> <laughs> yes well that yes. would be wonderful yeah thank you dr stefan okay okay thank you bridget also okay now we'll go to another continent from australia we'll move to the western hemisphere of the world we'll go to ecuador to latin america to listen to one of our wonderful wonderful friends is mr jose cabrera He's the, the secretary also of our International Federation of Epitherapy, and he has a huge experience with epitherapy in Latin America. He came also to many Congresses in Germany, in Romania, in Turkey, and he is really a wonderful friend. So Jose, uh, please uh, uh, let me, okay, let me put you first as uh, co-host. Yes, I'll put you co-host, okay. Podemos escucharte muy bien. Ok. Pues dale, José. Yes. Muy bien. Y si puedes poner pantalla grande. Uh, aquí sí. Sí. Ahí. Ahí. Ahora sí. Sí. Mucha suerte. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, Thank you very much uh, for in inviting uh, me to
to this wonderful event uh, for World Business Day. My name is uh, Joseph Cabrera. I am from of the Ecuador. Uh, I am going to talk about the history of apicultura, apitalapi uh, organization. Uh, my, my topic is diffusion of apitalapi in Ecuador and Latin America. Uh, first symposium of uh, apitalapi in Ecuador. Uh, you tours start on November 15, uh, 27, this event last year. Invite the speaker, Jose Cabrera, Ecuador, Symposium organiz Organizer, Teresa Giral, Assistant Researcher, responsible for research of apitherapia of uh, Estación Experimental de Cuba, uh, Walter Fier, Uruguay, Uruguay, Apimonia, Piterapin Commission, Stefan Stangasio, Romania, President of the Germany Society of Apiterapia, and Naito Irupume, Japón, Japan Apiterapia Society. FLA, Latin Federation of Apiterapia. In, in the city of Buenos Aires, Argentina, on September uh, 20, 25, 2011, at the La Rural Convention and the Exhibition Center on the occasion of the uh, 42 International Beekeeping Congress of Pimondia, the Latin Federation of Apitherapia is funded. Dr. Andres Castillo, President Ecuador. Dr. Stefan Stangasio, General Secretary of the FLAB, Romania, eh, Jose Cabrera, First Secretary, Ecuador. Ecuadorian eh, Association of Apitherapia, eh, Foundation Date February 1, 2012. First, the first uh, apitherapy symposium, uh, second apitherapy symposium, third symposium apitherapy, fourth uh, apitherapy symposium. International Federation of Apitherapy, IFA, Foundation date of April 20, 2012, in the city of South Germany. Field International Congress of the Apitherapy of the IFA in October uh, 17, 2014, Brazil, Romania. Second International Congress of Apitherapy of the IFA on September 2023, 20, 2016, Kaunas, uh, Lithuania. Third International Congress of Apitherapy of the IFA, November 22, 2018, Quito, Ecuador. Fourth International Virtual, Virtual Congress of Apitherapy of the IFA, together with the FELAPI on May 2021, Istanbul, Turkey. Dr. Ali Timuchi, Aya, President of the Congress, Dr. Esteban Estangasio, IFA Secretary General, Dr. Andres Castillo, Vice President of IFA and President of Pelapi, co-president of the Congress. This Congress took place in Turkey as the host country. Uh, we managed together uh, 12 Latin American countries, 12 countries in, in Europe, uh, four countries in Asia, two countries in Africa, the rest of Australia, Russia, Pakistan, Morocco, and Mali. More than uh, 56 uh, uh, conferences.
Latin America Federation of Happy Therapy, FELAPI Foundation Days, uh, November uh, 25, 2018, Quito, Ecuador. FELAPI organizes its first Happy Therapy Congress of November 7, 2019, in the city of Cancun, Mexico. The second FELAPI Congress will be held in Colombia in this year, 22. We still do not have an estimate date. FELAPI and the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic in Ecuador and Latin America begin on March 17, 2020. FELAPI begins a virtual company of conference of all of Latin America every weekend from April to December 2020, covering all topics using the products. Conference on the antiviral, antiviral properties of honey, propolis, apitoxin, the importance of a natura, a natural diet, uh, the mating strong immune system. Philippi and the Apitherap Diploma. Diploma, the diploma was carried out agreement uh, Asociación Ecuatoriana de Apitherapia, AEA, Philippi, Juan and the Unive of Mexico. Uh, First diploma in apitherapy. The diploma was developed with six instructors, Ecuador, Cuba, Peru, and Uruguay. 27 students attend from different countries, such as Canada, Spain, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, Brazil, and Ecuador. Subjects, the subjects that are aware of the and the clinic use of the B products, anatomy and physiology, diagnosis, elaboration of products, products for apitherapy, food, apicosmetics, and analysis, shohan, aphylactic. Second diploma in apitherapy. The second apitherapy diploma was carried uh, out with two more universities, the Unical Integral uh, Universidad of the Caribe y Latina, uh, Latin America. And the Marici University of the Caribbean and Latin America. The diploma this uh, time uh, is development with uh, eight instructors, Ecuador, Cuba, Argentina, Curaçao, Romania, and Uruguay. 51 uh, students attend from different countries, such as the United States, Spain, Hawaii, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, uh, Brazil, Argentina, and Ecuador subjects. The subjects that we are going to teach are apitherapy and the clinical use of B products, anatomy and physiology, diagnosis, diagnosis, elaboration the products of apitherapy, food, apicosmetic, and analysis, analy, anaphylaxis shock. In this bank of uh, subjects, we have included the three branches of medicine, allopathica, traditional medicine, uh, Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, and Ayurveda. The pandemic was a great opportunity to spring up therapy in Latin uh, America, the products of the bees, came to the bees exactly in almost all the countries of Latin America. The most used in the pandemic honey, propolis and apitoxina, incredible, incredible also pollen. 
with the products of the bees or living base on the planet uh, can live both micro and macro. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Stefan. Yes, very, very good. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. Uh, now, uh, yes, let me, oh, yes, very good, very good. Okay, so uh, Jose uh, is a wonderful coordinator. You saw so many events and it will come many other events, yes. Quales uh, son tus projectos ahora, Jose, para el futuro, por este año? El segundo diplomado, algo más? Sí, so. Lo voy a decir en, en español para que tú sí, me, sí. me traduzcas. Bueno, el, el proyecto que acabamos de hacer es aquí en Latinoamérica, uno de los más grandes encuentros del aire de la colmena que tuvo muchísima participación. Sí, es. So, so, Latinoamérica uh, conjuntamente con Estefan. Okay, so Jose just said that recently they organized, we organized together a very important conference on beehive air therapy, and it was in Spanish. So first one was in English, then in German, now in Spanish recently, and we'll do also in uh, Romanian, in uh, Turkish, and so many other languages. See? Si? El siguiente evento que tenemos eh, es la organización del primer simposio de apiterapia en Perú, los días 22, 23 y 24 de abril en la ciudad de Guaraz, a la cual están ustedes cordialmente invitados a visitar Latinoamérica. Okay, so next event also international will be in Peru in uh, April, April 22 to 24, in the city named Huaraz. And uh, Jose will go there by, by, by car, yes? Tú vas a caminar en coche, todo el camino. Así es. Eh, el siguiente evento, les invitamos a todos. Eh, estamos organizando un tour latinoamericano virtual para el 20 de mayo, el Día Mundial de las Abejas. Y tenemos muchos eventos, muchos eventos en cada uno de los países. Por ejemplo, eh, pintura de murales en cada uno de los países para ser develados el día 20, el día 20 con la prensa, con la televisión, eh, con gente que pueda convocar para difundir eh, la apiterapia y la apicultura a los niños, a los jóvenes, a los adultos. Por ejemplo, estamos organizando un mural en el norte de México, en el centro de México, en el sur de México, murales en Colombia, en Perú, en Argentina, en Chile, en Ecuador. Además, estamos organizando conferencias en cada uno de los países y también una conferencia grande con las Naciones Unidas, la FAO, eh, la WWF. Eh, estamos organizando eh, uh, eventos de forestación, de parques uh, con plantas polinizadoras. Es decir, hay grandes eventos. Por eso es que les invitamos a ustedes desde sus casas, sin que nadie les vea, a conservar las abejas, el medio ambiente, a sembrar plantas, a sembrar flores, a sembrar jardines, a cuidar el suelo, a cuidar el agua en beneficio de la conservación de las abejas y el medio ambiente. Hey, muchísimas gracias. So a lot of events in, in, uh, in Ecuador, in Latin America, also a tour, a virtual tour on epitherapy they do on May 20. So it's clearly a good idea to stay in touch with Jose, Jose Cabrera. Uh, Jose, si tú puedes poner en el chat también tus uh, uh, datos de contacto, cómo la gente te puede co uh, contactar, correo electrónico, aquí en el chat, ¿sí? Muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes. Un abrazo fuerte a usted, Estefan. También un abrazo muy agradecido por haberme escuchado este inglés muy, 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 pero muy malo, pero que ha servido por lo menos eh, para comunicarme con, uh, con ustedes de alguna manera. Yes, yes. Y una, una otra cosa he visto ahorita, José, en el chat. Hay personas que se interesan en el diplomado de apiterapia con UNICAL, pero en inglés. Si podrías yeah. hablar con uh, Carl, 
con el señor Camp, sí, se podría hacer. Sí. Eh, alguna de nuestras instructoras está aquí, Mayra de Uruguay. Ella sí. también es, es profesora de nuestro diplomado. Eh, formar profesionales en apiterapia en base a cursos, congresos, conferencias no es posible. Por eso es que hemos acudido a la academia y lo hemos hecho el primer diplomado de apiterapia con la CUAN, el Centro Universitario de Medicinas Alternativas de México y la Universidad UNIBE. Y actualmente estamos organizando el segundo simposio de apiterapia con la UNICAL y la Universidad Mariche del Caribe, y donde hemos incluido los tres grandes troncos de la medicina, la medicina alopática, la medicina china y la medicina tradicional, es decir, el Ayurveda. Eh, como siguiente etapa estamos pensando organizar también un diplomado en inglés, también un diplomado en inglés. Eh, en esto nos ayudará también Mayra, Estefan Estangacio, algunos profesionales de primera, Miraldo del Brasil, y eh, pensamos hacerlo esto. Y luego también pensamos hacer un masterado de apiterapia, esto sí con personas que que tengan título de tercer nivel, por ejemplo, médicos. Por ejemplo, médicos y apiterapeutas, los que practican medicina, eh, los naturópatas también. Esto eh, estamos pensando, ya está en agenda y lo vamos a lanzar próximamente. Ok, thank you very much, Jose. He just confirmed that they have been planned to do this kind of courses also in English. So the courses will be certified by these universities. And some of the speakers in the course are already good speakers in English. So the transfer of knowledge will be very good to, done, to be done. And uh, about uh, such speakers we have here, Mayra. So we go from Ecuador, we go a bit down to Uruguay. Mayra, can you please activate your microphone? And I will put you also as co-host. Okay, so yeah, now, now I put you co-host. So can you active? Yes. Can, can you say a few words we hear, to hear? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I need the help from Stefan because my English is not so good. Okay. Okay. My presentation now? Yes, please. Ah, okay. Uh, I speak about uh, API mesotherapy, but I speak uh, before about the API therapy in Uruguay. Stefan, please. <laughs> yes, yes, you said very well in English. Now, can you activate your PowerPoint? Can you share the screen? Yes. Mayra has emotions. Her heart is beating very, very fast. <laughs> Okay, share screen, so you go down to that green button. Yeah, yes, then again there, and then open your PowerPoint. Okay. This PowerPoint is, is not specific about the apitherapy uh, in Uruguay. It's specific uh, about my work in api mesotherapy, in dermo api mesotherapy. Stefan, si me traducís. Sí, ok. Eh, so. voy, a, voy a hablar un poquito de... Voy a adelantar un poco esto. Antes de, pero, pero, de volver puedes a a, pero puedes activar tu PowerPoint o después. ¿Ya está? Ah, no, 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 espera no, no, un momentito. Veamos. Espera un momentito que ya... Pensé que lo había activado. Que ya no. lo empiezo desde, desde lo que va. Incluso había ampliado la... No sé, no, no me permite. A ver, ahí. Oops. Sí. Ya, ahora sí. ¿Listo? Ah, genial. A ver, sí, perfecto. Espérate que voy a ampliar, ¿no? 
si puedes, pero está ya de internet. No, no creo que puedes ampliarlo más. O, eh, ok. Voy a, a retroceder un poquito para empezar a hablar justamente de... Antes de mi trabajo, para hablar un poco de, de la evolución de la apiterapia en, en Uruguay que en realidad en los años 80 fue que, que comenzaron el estudio del propóleo, bueno, el, perdón, en el año 80 ya se reconoció como un, un medicamento a nivel farmacológico, usado en diferentes áreas y, y de venta libre en farmacia, y el se veneno. empezó a indicar por muchos médicos. El veneno, ¿sí? Pero, ¿sí? Sí, ok, so in 1980, uh, in Uruguay, uh, Bivanomo is recognized as a medicine, es un remedio, sí. Yes. Ok. Y en el, en el año 90 es que apiterapeutas como Walter Fierro, como Marta Presvenda, médicos apiterapeutas que empezaron como apicultores a probar en, en el área de la medicina la, la pitoxina y, la, y, la, y el propóleo, eh, lograron desarrollar un laboratorio junto con otros apicultores también y profesionales y reconocer el Ministerio de Salud Pública para uso médico la pitoxina, como medicamento homeopático en realidad, como sustancia homeopática. Pero ya se vende en Uruguay para médicos solamente la pitoxina inyectable, que es la ventaja que tiene Uruguay. Ok, so in the 90s it was Dr. Walter Fierro Morales uh, and the Dr. Marta Pre, Marta Presbenda. And Presbenda. Presbenda, yes. Uh, who worked a lot on epitherapy and they succeed to get a recognition from the health department in Uruguay for the use of uh, uh, B venom as uh, apitoxin as uh, homeopathic remedy. Okay. Desde esa época hasta acá eh, se ha desarrollado eh, diferentes cursos, diferentes cursos eh, a nivel universitario en esa época, en, el, en los años 90, 96 hasta el 2002, pero, eh, pero realmente en los últimos años es que empezó un poco en cuanto a la formación, el declive la formación. Se logró llegar a nivel de ministerio, incluso a el Ministerio de Educación, a sacar a nivel universitario, no la especialidad como apiterapia como tal, sino que cursos dentro de la universidad. Entonces eh, Uruguay está, está bastante abierto, o estuvo en alguna época muy abierto a, a todo lo que era, son las terapias alternativas, ya se institucionalizó eh, la acupuntura a nivel hospitalario, a nivel de mutualistas, de seguros privados, y hay muchas eh, fitoterapias también, hay muchas técnicas que ya están entrando en medicina convencional. Y hay, okay. a pesar de ser un país muy pequeño, hay mucho desarrollo a nivel de medicinas alternativas o complementarias, como, como le llamo yo. Okay. So, although Uruguay is a very small country, there are many complementary methods uh, practiced there, acupuncture, homeopathy, and so on and so on. Uh, it was a, a big activity in many courses between 96 and 2002. Okay. En, en Uruguay los apiterapeutas eh, solo son médicos, o sea, los que pueden utilizar la, la pitoxina eh, son solo médicos. La pitoxina es inyectable. Entonces, un poco desde el origen de la pitoxina, desde el desarrollo a nivel de laboratorio, ya se, se comprometió como el uso profesional. Por eso no hay formación de apiterapeutas que no sean médicos. Los apiterapeutas que no son médicos pueden usar eh, el tema, por supuesto, de lo, de lo, del resto de los subproductos, ¿no? la amplia gama de subproductos y a nivel de, de nutracéuticos a través de, de complementos alimentarios, pero no como eh, la apitoxina inyectable, no. De hecho, en Uruguay, creo que solo un apiterapeuta trabaja con las abejas, que no es médico, que está dentro de nuestra asociación de apiterapia, formada este año. <risa> eh, la verdad que nos costó mucho unirnos, pero, pero ya se está, está cobrando forma mucho de, de, de la formación y de la unión entre los apiterapeutas médicos. Pero solo una trabaja con la, con la abeja directa, lo demás todos trabajamos con el inyectable y con el, los, los demás derivados. Entonces como Uruguay cobró forma, digamos, la apiterapia de la mano de los médicos que la desarrollaron desde, desde su origen prácticamente. 
Entonces, sí. ahora es que nos unimos y estamos, estamos justamente gestionando una formación profesional que es un poco diferente a la formación que se puede dar en otros países por justamente, solamente eh, para profesionales. Y debe ser también en la parte práctica y demás, con todo lo que lleva el trabajo con el inyectable. Eh, okay. Hablar un poquito disculpa, de... Disculpa, Mayra, para traducir un poquito. Pero diga, dígame, ¿en, en qué, qué tipo de asociación eres ahora? Uh, ¿Hay una, una nueva asociación? Oh. Asociación de apiterapia. Ah, okay. Dentro de la, de la comisión de la sociedad Pícola, ah, okay. pero recién este año, el, el año sí, recién este año es que el año pasado, perdón, es que logramos unirnos porque no existía eso. Okay. Y realmente los médicos apiterapeutas es, so, trabajan muy independiente y tal vez estuvieron unidos en algún en algún en algún tiempo, pero realmente ahora estamos muy divididos y el objetivo es eso, juntarnos para, para poder trabajar juntos y desarrollar la apiterapia y controlar también el, el nivel de la okay. apiterapia, porque es una cosa que, digo, uno que, que, que tenga mal formación o que no tenga buen conocimiento y la verdad que pagamos todos, y Uruguay es un país muy chico, entonces okay. también por eso un poco de, de, de poder intercambiar, de, de generar experiencia y conocimiento, intercambio, para poder aprender de la experiencia de cada uno, que es lo más importante. Okay. Um, Así que bueno, un camino de unión. Ok, ok. So, uh, in, Europe, in Uruguay, only medical doctors can use uh, injectable bivenom. So, uh, only the medical doctors can take courses on the medical use of bivenom. So, uh, but the other B products, the soft ones, can be used, of course, by other people. And she said that the many several medical doctors in Uruguay, they, they got together in an association beside the beekeeping association, and they, they start to, to cooperate on these issues. Um, Mayra, no tenemos mucho tiempo y hay, hay también uh, otras personas para hablar. Si puedes presentar donde te fuiste, <laughs> presentar los uh, diapositivas sobre la... Uh, Okay, I believe we lost uh, we lost uh, Mayra. She pushed on some button <laughs> by mistake, and she closed the the connection with us. Yeah, it can happen. It's funny, but it can happen. So she she prepared some slides with um, uh, before and after uh, using especially bivenom in form of mesotherapy. So very very small amounts of bivenom on the skin, which activates the the production of uh, stem cells and many other things, and the results are spectacular. Okay, so until uh, until Mayra will come back, uh, who would like to, to put some questions? Or maybe we, we may have somebody else to, to, to give the, the lecture. Okay, so I see, yes, one question from Mahin. Yes, Mahin, please. Uh, you need to activate your microphone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I want to ask her that does she do injection or only mixture with uh, with some cream and things and uh, doing on the face? Okay. What was so, the so, way? Yes. Hopefully she'll come back. Uh, but she is. I know uh, she will use uh, all kind of combinations. It's a complex protocol. Creams, injections, micro injections, mesotherapy, it's a special device. And you inject like uh, 10, 20 different uh, needles, very, very small needles. And you, you inject through these very small needles. Just Google mesotherapy. But it's better to come in contact directly with, uh, with Mayra. And uh, of course, she'll give uh, more details. And by the way, we'll organize uh, a full event, like two days event on Dermo api aesthetics. So it will be like two days long, everything on the beauty and the, the api therapy. So just stay in touch with us and uh, uh, we'll tell you the date. Uh, by the way, let me let me check the date because you can write down uh, when will be this event on api aesthetics. Let me check. I believe we said it will be in June. Yes, uh, June 4 to 5. It will be there, the symposium on uh, the API aesthetics. Oh, yes, Mayra, you are back. Act activate your camera. 
We, we lost you. Yes. Estoy en el campo, entonces la conexión se va y viene, va y viene todo el tiempo. Ok. Pero okay. está, ahora esperemos que sí me conecte. Ok, ok. Mayra, uh, no tenemos mucho tiempo. Comparto si, pues, de nuevo. Sí, sí, puedes compartir de nuevo uh, las diapositivas sobre tus tratamientos. Ok. Mm. A ver, para un momentito. Aquí. Ahora, hola. Ahora. Sí. Bien. And go to, go to the slides with the, your method of, uh, uh, for the beauty. Uh, eh, for, ¿Quedó? No, si, si puedes ir a la diapositiva 48 para explicar un poco en algunos minutos cómo haces con la mesoterapia. 48. Lo, lo veo aquí en bajo, sí. Ahí. ¿Ahí? Ah, ah, no, no se vea todavía. Uh, puedes ir... Creo, no, no, creo que tú eres aquí. Ah, ahí, ahí. Clic doble, doble. Si sí, se puede activar, pero no. No funciona. ¿No se ve? No se ve, no se ve. Eh, ¿Tú tienes un PowerPoint? Un PowerPoint, porque aquí eres en Internet. Tú eres en API Estética. Ah, presentación. ¿Por qué no funciona? Era de, eh, voy a abrir desde campo. Sí. A ver desde ahí. Ahí se ve. Uh, uh, creo que va a venir. Tengo que compartir. Ok, así. Ah, y va ¿Sí? a, los siguientes, a los siguientes. Sí, sí, ok, ok. ¿Se ve? Ahora sí, perfecto, perfecto. Sí. Bien, entonces un poco eh, el desarrollo que se ha dado la apiterapia acá eh, ha sido a, a través de profesionales veterinarios, odontólogos, médicos en asociación con los apicultores, por supuesto, que, que son los que están más en contacto con, con las abejas y los, los subproductos de calidad que usamos nosotros, ¿no? por supuesto. Mi familia, por ejemplo, se dedica a la producción de, y, a, y a la de exportación incluso de, de miel y productos orgánicos fair trade. Entonces, un poco ligado a eso, que, que la apiterapia también tiene que... El, el, el fundamento de la apiterapia es, es tener un buen control y, y tener un, usar productos de calidad, porque si no... En cuanto a agrotóxico y demás, estamos tratando de hacer las cosas bien cuando en realidad estamos, estamos, seguimos en el mismo círculo de, de contaminación. Entonces un poco tener el control también, y eso es lo que queremos hacer de, en cuanto a los productos y a la calidad de los productos y los registros que hay en cuanto a eso. Okay. Se está desarrollando so, varios proyectos. Ok, so they are controlling the quality of the big products because they are already cooperating with the beekeepers and they know very well about the quality of the products they are using. Okay, next. Bueno, entonces, dentro de, de mi especialidad, eh, de mis especialidades, eh, desarrollé, incorporé, primero me formé en medicina estética, en, en medicina clínica, en dermatología, en parte estética dermatológica, y en nutrición, y en ortomolecular, o sea, toda la bioquímica, de, de la estabilidad bioquímica del ser, lo que necesitamos a nivel de vitaminas, oligoelementos y demás. Entonces lo que hice fue fusionar, incorporar todo lo que es la apiterapia en cuanto a eso, al uso en, de, como desintoxicantes, como propiedades a nivel de, de, de tejidos, en todas las patologías estéticas y también la parte nutricional. Entonces un poco mostrarle eso y en cuanto a lo bioquímico, exacto lo que se puede hacer en apiterapia con estudios eh, de escáneres, espectrofotómetros, que, que pueden medir exactamente el resultado de lo que estamos haciendo. Ok. Yes, so Mayra is using that's a lot of nutrition. She studied a lot of nutrition, the biochemistry part, to be able to combine apiterapia with nutrition for the beauty. Sí. Siguiente, siguiente diapositiva, Mayra, no lo vemos. Voy, a, ah, ah, voy sí. a ir para atrás, voy a ir para adelante, perdón. Y voy a empezar de atrás para adelante. Para no enredarlo con tanta cosa. 
un poco de, de lo básico y después vamos a más, al, más al detalle con imágenes. Entonces que el objetivo y lo que podemos controlar es, es justamente nuestros hábitos y, y el camino tiene que ser eso. Y es lo único que nos puede salvar, el control de nuestros hábitos, incorporar los productos de la colmena de diferentes, diferentes maneras. En todo, en la hidratación, en movimientos, en desintoxicación, en la calidad del sueño, cómo, cómo podemos aplicar todos los productos en es, buscando esa actividad, buscando ese equilibrio. Okay, so it is very important to get the balance between all these things you see on the screen. Okay. Entonces poco de, de que la nutriología médica habla de, de cómo podemos a través de los alimentos y los suplementos de la colmena eh, tener todo lo que necesitamos para llegar al equilibrio bioquímico desde todos los productos la jalea real el uso de los productos de la colmena también de detoxificación todos los procesos de desintoxicación que eso es primordial antes de todos los tratamientos Okay, so it is very, very important to do detox before any treatment for the beauty. Sí. Dentro de ello está la desintoxicación con miel, el drenaje linfático, muy importante, después de la aplicación de, de, la, de la pitoxina, incluso 48 horas después, eh, en, eh, aplicar con una emulsión hecha con miel. Realmente el, el drenaje se hace primero para saber si está drenando li, la linfa eh, sin, sin productos, pero realmente el beneficio que he logrado con la miel es asombroso en cuanto a drenar y en cuanto a nutrición. So lymph drainage too, to clean the lymph, yes. Después el, la composición, mandé a analizar, esto si bien es una diapositiva que incluso fue una, una, un estudio que hicieron en México, pero en Uruguay, no, no, no está actualizado. En Uruguay mandé a analizar los compuestos de, del polen y del pan de abeja nuestro y realmente superaban un poco las, lo que son los síntesis a nivel de especificación en cuanto a lo, lo que tiene cada producto nuestro. Y realmente en lugar de mandar magnesio y todo lo que necesitamos de forma independiente, poder mandar en un solo producto que es el polen o el pan de abeja, por supuesto el pan de abeja tiene mayores propiedades, se asimila mejor, eh, poder mandar solo un producto y que complemente todo lo que necesitamos. Okay, so they use uh, bee pollen and bee bread in, in Uruguay and they test it for, for the quality for the biochemistry. Yes. Después, productos nuevos que se desarrollaron también acá, el vinagre y todo el vinagre de miel eh, con, con la, la madre incluso y todos los fermentados, cómo lo podemos usar a nivel de, por supuesto, patología digestiva, pero a nivel de piel también, de tratamientos con hidrocolonoterapia y en diferentes tipos de tratamiento. Entonces, esos productos ya, ya están y ya están circulando en Uruguay. Okay, so here are products based on honey vinegar, not only for the digestive system, but also for the skin. Sí. Después, el, el uso del ayuno terapéutico, pero con los productos de la colmena también, o sea, los productos que no rompan el ayuno y la busca un poco el estudio que realizo para poder determinar exacto a nivel de espectrofotometría palmar eh, cómo fueron los resultados con la terapia un mes después, dos meses después. Ok, so she used also all kinds of methods to get, uh, to make a good diagnosis. Okay. Un poco eso. Sí. No sé si se ve el video. Sí, se ve, se ve. Perdón por el sonido que ninguno está. Si les interesa, después le puedo mandar el material sí, y eso sobre, sí, sobre sí. eso, porque es un método muy interesante y no invasivo para medir a nivel intracelular el, el tratamiento, la, la evolución del tratamiento que hacemos con los suplementos, que era algo un poco que no teníamos mucha, mucha referencia a cómo medirlo exactamente. Luego todos los procesos de desintoxicación con los, los productos de la colmena, hidrocolonoterapia realizo con los productos de la colmena, el aire de la abeja, a todos los de parasitología y demás, desparásito, para el hígado, riñón, eso se hace siempre. El aire de la colmena aplicó varias técnicas con técnicas respiratorias, 
si bien ahora aún, y digo aún porque dentro de poco ya va a haber esto, y se va a, va a haber buenas noticias en cuanto a apiturismo, eh, yo lo hago de forma individual con nebulizadores, está con los subproductos, no es lo mismo que el aire de la colmena, pero se hace de esa manera individual, cada paciente se lleva su kit y lo hace. Y ya pronto va a haber el aire de la colmena ya con otras cositas más. El uso de sauna, el sauna infrarrojo con el aire de la colmena, también con subproductos de, de la colmena. Sobre el sauna infrarrojo hay varios estudios, ahora es muy diferente a lo que es el, el sauna común, yo lo uso para, eh, más que nada, para, para metales pesados, para desintoxicación de metales pesados. Una desintoxicación, el hígado. Vamos a volver al inicio, que es sobre las técnicas que, que desarrollo en inyectables. Voy a mostrarle imágenes. La, dentro de, de... Primero... Siempre que, que, que se puede hacer la desintoxicación por tejidos, se hace, no importa el paciente venga como venga, porque es, no es verdad que un paciente venga con un problema, siempre viene como un conjunto, y hay, hay, no, hay, no hay enfermedades sino hay pacientes, hay personas con su, su bioindividualidad, entonces hay que hacer todo un tratamiento desde adentro hacia afuera y el equilibrio. Esto no solamente sirve para estética, sirve para todas las enfermedades con excelente resultado. Entonces, un poco las técnicas que uso, que son variadas, a nivel, el, el objetivo es dejar poca cantidad y tener muy, muy preciso dónde lo vas a dejar para que actúe durante 20 días aproximadamente la sustancia. Hay varias técnicas de incorporación de las sustancias. En la mesoterapia se trata a nivel superficial y para diferentes patologías, dependiendo del nivel, dependiendo de la técnica también. Un poco en, en los cursos y en la preparación lo que hacemos es, eh, es dar una introducción y una preparación a nivel de medicina estética, que es todo un mundo, entonces por eso digo tiene que ser tomado como una especialidad aparte, porque es, todas las patologías estéticas, por supuesto que se abordan de, de, desde el interior al exterior, pero, y son patologías que llevan al dolor, que llevan un proceso circulatorio importante y que hay que hacer un poco énfasis en, en no dejar pasar y que no es simplemente estético. Con los resultados con mesoterapia, con drenaje, con todos los productos de la colmena. Se usa eh, la pitoxina de 3 normalmente en diferentes niveles. Realmente las diluciones yo siempre la hice con D3. No sé si por qué me gusta más concentrado que, pero de ahí haces la dilución dependiendo de cada paciente. Pero se usa muy poca sustancia. El objetivo es dejar en, en, en el tejido que vaya perfundiendo gran cantidad, pero muy pequeña dosis. Entonces, okay. para que sea más a nivel de estímulo que a nivel de, de la carga de la dosis como tal, es más la punción y la microestimulación. Da muy buen resultado, incluso Pedro Pérez y, y los demás que trabajan con, apiterap, con la apipuntura directa con la abeja, utilizan el, el mismo abijón varias veces o con rejilla, y eso realmente les ha, dado, les ha dado buenos resultados. Entonces un poco es eso, llevarlo a otro nivel, digamos, a, a la parte del inyectable. Esto después de 10 sesiones, incluso ahora voy a mostrar un, un, una imagen que es después de 3 sesiones, pero se nota desde la primera vez. Una combinación ideal es el plasma rico en plaquetas con la pitoxina. Nunca juntos y dependiendo de lo que sea, porque la pitox, el plasma rico, la pitoxina bloquea los resultados del plasma rico. Entonces se, se inyecta junto. Entonces siempre es según la evaluación y según la indicación, pero da muy, muy buen resultado en cuanto a todo, en cuanto a celulitis, en cuanto a regeneración de tejidos. Circulatorio, todo lo que sea, trastornos a nivel circulatorio, báresis, todo, fascia, estimulación de fascia, 
estos son casos de, a nivel estético, pero son casos también a nivel de, de, de posición, notamos que inducción miofacial se puede hacer con la pitoxina, y cómo a nivel de fascia cambia postura en la misma asociación el antes y el después. Un poco los, los resultados que, que se han obtenido en una sesión consecutiva, esto fue una vez por semana que se hizo la paciente. Entonces, a nivel de elevación de tejido, se combinaron varias técnicas ahí. Esta está maquillada, pero... Un poco eso. Las personas que no entendieron que fueron muchas <risa> eh, voy a hacer un video eh, traducido sí esta es y no la voy idea. a hacer la diapositiva en inglés también y voy a dar sí. voy a, voy a es, es cuestión de, de perderle el miedo a hablar sí. nada más sí. ok ok ok, okay. <risa> pero son muchas... muchas cosas técnicas sí muchas gracias uh, muchas gracias Mayra So uh, we will uh, uh, put this video in the internet in YouTube and uh, you have there uh, uh, automatic translation uh, from Spanish to English. But also uh, Mayra promised that she will do uh, the, way, uh, the PowerPoints also in English and she will send uh, to us as soon as possible. Okay, thank you very much, Mayra. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, can you make the, stop the share screen now? Okay, let me check if you cannot make the stop share screen. Yeah, okay. Yes, no, no, it's okay, it's working. Okay, so uh, some, some uh, one, two questions for Mayra, if you have, if say anybody has some question until we uh, prepare the next presentation. Any practical question, but short one for Mayra. Anybody? Oh, I just saw Mahin, she said that she's doing the same kind of things in, in Switzerland, more or less, and she will uh, come with us, uh, will present with us in June about her experience. Okay, so I do not see uh, any question. So, uh, uh, yes, okay. So uh, I see here Agnieszka, Agnieszka from Poland. Uh, can you hear us? Agnieszka pre prepare some some uh, some presentation on Poland. Yes, okay. Please uh, activate your camera. Where are you? Yes, we see now. Okay, say a few words to hear you. We cannot hear you. Okay, let me make her yes. Okay, so. Uh, again, thank you to Mayra. Applauses for Mayra for her presentation. It was extraordinary. Uh, but we need to have it in English, Mayra. Next time in English, yes? You promise, yes? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, Agnieszka, now uh, we cannot hear you. Uh, it's something with your settings. Maybe your, uh, if you go to, on the uh, bottom left, where is the microphone? And it's a small uh, sign there. And it, it try to change the audio settings. Okay. Okay, so until then, let me see here. Okay. Marie-Pierre, est-ce que tu m'entends? Marie-Pierre de Canada. Hello. Ah, okay. The, uh, yes, now, now we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. Oh. Very good, very good. Okay. Um, now, uh, can, can you say a few words and uh, can you activate your share screen uh, for the, the short presentation? Uh, can you activate the, the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Nazywam się Agnieszka Benicka. 
mój syn Szymon Węgliński będzie tłumaczył. Yeah, so instead of as a translator, uh, this is uh, a piece from English from my mom. I am uh, her son, uh, Szymon Węgliński. And uh, my mom was working uh, with the bees uh, since, started working with the bees since 2020. So it's uh, two years. Started from a small uh, two beehives. Today are uh, 10 and uh, hope in the future there will be more. Uh, and we are really interested in uh, apitherapy and uh, beekeeping, so we want to learn more about it. And we also prepared some quick history of Polish uh, beekeeping and apitherapy. Uh, there's no precise date uh, when beekeeping was established in Poland. The oldest archaeological evidence of man made beehives, an oak recovered from the Oder River. It had holes for bees made with a human hand at a height of uh, five meters above the root system. The age of wild beehives is estimated at over 2000 years. Uh, in the 16th and 18th centuries, Honey hunting regions were located where there were honey bearing forests of even several thousand beehives. Only a tree trunk with a diameter of 100, 100 120 centimeters could be used as a home for insects. If it was a pine tree, it must have been growing for at least 120 years. Apart from pines, oak was the preferred species. Sometimes beehives were located in horn beams, beaches, and linden trees. At that time, Poland was called one large apiary. It was also the largest exporter of honey. Uh, the first known honey hunting regulations came from come from uh, uh, the reign of Caspian Bird the Great. The previously existing laws were written down in the Statute of Wisnica in 1347. Uh, later, the destruction of forests, looting and wars meant that the hollow logs were placed closer to the houses, burning and gradually giving way to home apiary. It was gradually giving way to, uh, way to home apiary. This process was initiated in the 19th century there, were, uh, there are references to the construction of apiaries and the farms, located on the bridges around the track. From this period, although, uh, although most often log hives were tied to trees. Uh, contempor uh, contemporary beekeeping took shape at the beginning of the 19th century. At the time, bees were bred in logs or kettles. There were in the form of bows woven of straw placed on special platforms, closing them at the bottom. In 1845, Jan Gerson, for the first time, presented the hypothesis about the parthenogenesis of bees. He also published the rules for the construction of a hive with movable frames. He is called the father of Polish beekeeping. The traveling economy appeared, and the bee breeding and uh, artificial insemination of mothers were developed. The total numbers of hives was estimated about 600,000 at that time. Uh, the apitherapy was a uh, very long and uh, rich tradition. People have used bee products uh, as a remedy for various elements for centuries. There is no, uh, we were famous for honey and mead, which have, um, which have, uh, have anti-inflammatory, antibacterial and antiviral properties. They were very eagerly eaten in red quantities in the Middle Ages. 
the use of bee products uh, in medical practice until the mid 20th century was not scientifically proven. After the 20s and 30s, research began. Preparations began to be introduced into cosmetics, and this is how the royal jelly was developed. In uh, 1958, Dr. Józef Matuszewski popularized him among Polish uh, society. Uh, he's considered a precursor of apitherapy. At the same time, attention was paid to pollen, and we made a significant contribution to the study of pollen and Billy. Henrik Olstak is considered the father of Polish apitherapy. He was a Roman Catholic priest, author of theology, but also, and, and in, the, in, the, in this case, above all, a beekeeper and honorary president uh, Abit uh, In the 80s, in Krakow, the fifth international symposium on apitherapy and the apitherapy session in the World Congress Apimondia in Warsaw was organized in Krakow. The achievements and development of apitherapy in our country resulted in two significant events. Poland assumed, Poland assumed the presidency uh, of the Apimondia um, Committee of Apitherapy in Rome in 1987, from, from 1987 to 1930, and the Committee of, for Examinal Air Therapy. On October 15, 1990, in 1991, the Polish Foundation of Apitherapy was established. The founder and main chairman was Professor Artur Stojko, who gathered around him a group of professors with extensive knowledge about the healing properties of bee products. Professor Artur Stojko was known in Poland and in the world as an apitherapist. He headed the Permanent Apitherapy Commission of Apimondia International Beekeeping Organization. Uh, other Polish famous uh, apitherapists were Professor Dr. Uh, Richard Fernetsky, uh, Professor Bogdan Kedia, Magister uh, Elżbieta Hogna Kedia, and Dr. Jan Giza. Coming up, beekeeping and apitherapy are developing every year. For 2020, uh, well, for uh, 2020, we had uh, over 1,650,000 bee An interesting fact is that the consumption of honey is low compared to European countries. Uh, it is related to the price of honey and little emphasis in schools and medical centers of bee products. But uh, on the bright side, we also have uh, uh, increased, uh, increased interest in beekeeping and uh, bee products since pandemics and uh, the uh, desire of uh, better health. Możesz dodać, że od roku prowadzone są zajęcia w szkołach dla dzieci. Są przedstawiane prezentacje, pokazywane produkty w szczele, omawiane życie pszczół. Yeah. Uh, since, uh, since, since a year ago, we have uh, over, uh, in school generally, generally we have more uh, educational uh, programs and there is more awareness about uh, bee products and the gifts we are, uh, the bees are giving to the society. Budowane są miejsca i place z tematem życia pszczół. There are also increases in infrastructures and also investments coming, uh, coming from the government. Widać, że jest większe zainteresowanie nie tylko miodem, ale właśnie kultem pszczelim. People are more interested uh, not only in, a, in a honey, but also from, from uh, pollen and 
um, other products that are uh, given by the base to, to the to, to people. Yeah, it's getting better. And we are also really uh, thankful for your invitation to this uh, great uh, presentation. And uh, I think that's all. Okay, thank you very, very much. Yes, Agnieszka, yes, please. Okay, thank you. It was a short presentation, but very interesting. You have many scientists in, uh, in Poland, also in the past and nowadays. And uh, there, is, uh, there are universities which are working with the B products. And we, we listened to some of them in the last conferences. Very, very good. Any questions for Anieszka uh, or for the other speakers? Um, Oh, I have one question for Anieszka and uh, her son. Uh, shall we do you do also beehive air therapy? Shall you try in the future? Once again, please. Uh, beehive air, you know, like inhalation from the beehive. Yeah, inhalation, just, just like this one. Yeah, we, we want to try. Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Because we organize these conferences, and I see here in the group Beate. Uh, Beata McKenzie, maybe, maybe she's near the uh, computer and she can uh, tell us a few words about uh, the system in Germany if she's hearing us. Okay, she's not hearing us. <laughs> okay, so many people, they are staying um, connected, but they are not near the computer. Okay, uh, any other questions or comments uh, related to what we spoke until now? I saw in the chat area somebody asked about the scientific evidence, and uh, there are thousands of articles about the biochemistry and about the pharmacology of the B products. There are also more and more clinical studies on, uh, on AP therapy. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, things more to do in the future, but we are not so bad. Okay. Good. So anybody else who would like to, to say a few words? We are almost at the end of the, our wonderful day. Okay. So, Mayra, okay, I'm looking to the chat area. So Mayra will translate in English her presentation and we'll put it here. Okay. So now, uh, Nobody's putting any question. Dr. Timuchin, oh yes, Sonata, I, I saw, uh, is he here? Maybe you can activate your cameras at least to make the photo group. Like uh, we are at the end. So let's make the photo group. Okay, yes, please activate your cameras. The ones who are still here, yes. Very good, hello, Marie, Marie-Pierre. <laughs> bonjour, Marie-Pierre, bonjour. Okay. Okay, Jana, I see Sander Dinga from Netherlands, yes? Yes. Sander wants to come to Romania for practical courses, but you need to make a tour in all these countries. You go make a tour in South America, Canada. Okay. Okay, so more cameras, please activate more cameras. Paolo Augusto de Andrade. Asra, okay, let's wait. Ma, uh, Marie Pierre, do you want to say a few words? Like, we love you from Canada. <laughs> yes, yes. Marie Pierre was all, always a shy person, but she's doing a lot of things on AP therapy. Dr. Gheorghe Dobre from Romania. Hello, Dr. Dobre. Yes, Dr. Dobre is a veterinarian, very good beekeeping expert. And he's also fighting with the, the officialities uh, for the protection of the bees. Okay, Stephen, Stephen, from where are you, Stephen? What country? Uh, oh, yeah, maybe if you can activate also some of your microphones to hear you. Uh, uh, from Kenya. From Kenya, yes, very good. And I see also Brian Mo from Nigeria. 
by the way, uh, all, uh, Africa is now coming so fast uh, in the development of API therapy. Uh, the communication is unbelievable. And I'm sure the future is very good looking in, in Africa too. Okay. So yes, Beat is activating her camera too. Okay, let's wait a bit. Dr. Timuchin, if you are here. Okay, so we have here, oh yes, it's the other two, yes, okay. So now, do you know how to take a, a, like a photo of the screen with the print screen? So look to the, your keyboard, where is the button on print screen? And then, uh, then you move your eyes again to the camera. And now prepare the best smile of your life. One, two, three. Good, very good. I put it here. Let me transfer it to uh, our AP therapy network here. Okay. And uh, yes, photo group. It's going okay. Okay, so yes, I see finally also Beate. Beate, hello. You you came also connected with us. Yes. Uh, thank you very very much to all of you for this day. It was um, uh, very shortly planned. Like a couple of days ago, it was that lady from Iran, uh, Soma, uh, who came with the idea to organize uh, this kind of online event. So I'm sorry for the. Uh, not having uh, the very chronological uh, order of the presentations, but it was very nice. We saw uh, many of uh, our friends and we learned some new things. And uh, most important, you saw that we'll have many other events in the future. So stay connected with us. We have these WhatsApp groups. So it's uh, in, in English, in French, in German, in Spanish, in Portuguese. So there are many WhatsApp groups on API therapy and also on different areas like Beehive Air, API Pediatry, API Microbiology. By the way, we'll organize another big conference on API therapy in microbiology. So um, stay in touch with all of us and uh, thank you very much for being with us together. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.